All right, so hey, it's uh, Abner J3 with AJ3 Report. I'm here with the beautiful and talented Don Lewis. Thank uh, from you. you know, from a different world, I'm gonna get you sucker and hanging with Mr. Cooper. So how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good and thank you for giving me the opportunity to interview someone that's been in the game for uh, quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Since I was a kid. Okay. Since I was a kid, yeah. Started yep. singing at four and dancing at seven. Okay. So, uh, just about my entire life. So I'm grateful. When I saw what you were trying to accomplish and in your, your podcast and your, in your presentations, I was like, you know what? This is somebody who uh, I would really like to support in his journey. Sounds like he's getting started and trying to do a good thing in a good way. So All right. it's my pleasure to be here with you. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So you're a good person to have on Wednesday for a working woman Wednesday. Come on now, because women be working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the first question would be, uh, tell everyone how were you discovered and how your acting career started. Wow. Okay. Like I mentioned, I started singing at four. I started dancing at seven. So right. I actually thought I was going to be a professional recording artist. I was right. also a writer. I used to love to write poetry. So by the time I was 15, I had several of my poems published in a compilation of successful teens from around the country. I uh, started in high school at 14, graduated at 16, and went to college, like you said, down at the University of Miami. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, I had been playing cello for years, and I was singing uh, pop music. I was lead singer in a band at 14, but I was also studying opera. So right. I went to the High School of Music and Arts, performing arts high school that the series Fame right. was, was based on. Mm -hmm. That's the high school that I went to. So okay. I started college really early as an opera singer. But like I said, I'd also been dancing and acting since I was young. So I actually crafted, I'm going to use that word, my own curriculum mm. in college. So a yeah. lot of the courses that they wanted me to take in college, I had already taken in high school, like right. sight singing and music theory. So I didn't see the point in taking them again. So I erased that off of my schedule and wrote in dance classes and acting classes and performance classes. And uh, the short of the long story is they ended up developing the musical theater degree program at the university around me All right. um, because of the way I had created my own curriculum. Uh, they now started this new degree program. So I'm the first graduate and uh, founder of the musical theater degree program at the University of Miami. All so right, I graduated congrats. from there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And a couple of years when I finished, I came back to New York was trying to get my own record deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I got one on an independent label called Dalmatian Records, but I was also still singing and dancing and off-Broadway shows and did a Broadway tour with the show The Tap Dance Kid with an actor named Dulé Hill that mm -hmm. a lot of people know now from the show Psych and um, Suits and lots of other different mm -hmm. things. He was our kid at the time. So Dulé is like my little brother. Okay. At the time, the Cosby Show had just gotten started maybe for a year or mm -hmm. two, and I knew they were going to do a spinoff, so I wanted to be seen for the spinoff, so I auditioned to be in the show, uh, right. ultimately got the part of Jaleesa, but I was also a composer, so they right. hired me to write the theme song for the show, but they didn't know that they had hired the same person to do two different jobs until after they had hired me. All so right. that's how I got to write the theme song and to be in the cast of A Different World. And from there, as you mentioned, I've gone on to do a ton of other shows. Uh, I'm currently, before COVID happened, I was doing the Broadway show Tina, the okay. Tina Turner musical on Broadway, playing Zelma Bullock, Tina's mom. Okay. Uh, but I was also recording for a new Star Trek series that okay. just got released a couple of weeks ago. The new episode drops every Thursday. It's okay. called Star Trek Lower Decks. I do the voice of the captain of the ship. Okay. And... Uh, you know, life keeps happening. I do, I don't know, like almost 10 different animated series now. Okay. Uh, in addition to what people have come to know me for in front of the camera, I okay. do the Star Trek show, a show called Apple and Onion, another show called Few Futurama, another okay. show called Where in the World is Carmen San Diego on Netflix, and you know, lots of other things. And uh, the new Amazon series, well, it's the second season for the series, The Boys. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's on Amazon. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm guest starring in the upcoming second season that debuts on September 4th. So okay. we'll talk about working women. I'd be working. <laughs> yeah. I'd be yeah, working. So Grateful I'd for get, it. I'd uh, hit you up later when everything go back to uh, check out that Tina Turner uh, show. I oh, like man, please. 
You got to yeah. come through. You got to yeah, come we, through. We was in New York last May, and we tried to do the uh, Ain't Too Proud to Bay show, but they were sold out. Well, okay. All right. And that show is right across the street from us. Okay. We're on I the did. same block as Ain't Too Proud to Beg in Hamilton. Okay, because we did the, um, I think 2017, we did the uh, Color Purple with okay. um, when Jennifer Hudson was in there. When she was in it. Okay. Yes. Jennifer's amazing. She's yes. what an amazing, amazing talent. She really is. Yes. So, yeah, I love doing the Broadway and Tyler Perry plays. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So come back and visit us when, when we reopen. That's probably not going to be till sometime next year, though. Yeah. Yeah. You New know, York, like that's the reality of it. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm grateful for the other things I get to do in the meantime. Yeah. So the next question would be, what are the pros and cons of being an actress? Wow. The pros and cons. The yeah. pros yeah. for me are doing what I love to do. Right. Uh, this is a passion for me. Mm -hmm. uh, whether I'm on stage live, like in a show like Tina, mm -hmm or on television or in a movie or doing voices or composing music. That's the passion of it. All right. The cons is that you jump from one job to the next. Nothing lasts. All you right. know, each show, each project starts mm -hmm. and it ends. So it's not, a, it's not a lifestyle for the faint of heart. You've got to be perpetually self-motivating. Yes. You know, because our resume changes every other week. You have to add the next gig and then go out and present yourself for something new and mm -hmm. continue to convince people of why they should hire you instead of somebody else, you know? Okay. A lot of people have jobs that they can retire from. This one job, you know, I worked mm -hmm. at this one job for 16 years and I'm collecting my pension mm -hmm. and I'm retiring. Most of us, if you can get a gig that lasts 16 weeks, you're yeah. doing something. <laughs> yes. You're doing something. So those are the pros and cons of being in the in, in industry. You really got to love it to stick with it, with it. Yeah, I do the TV extra. So I got four IMDb credits. So uh, I go. know you, you work like 13, 14 hours on set. So exactly. it's, it's a lot a of work. Day. Mm -hmm. A day. Yeah. It's a lot of work. And people who do it well make it look easy. But you, yes. can, you can tell them. It's mm -hmm. not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. So you work late at night, early in the morning. So trust me, I exactly. know what you all go through. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. When that show is over, you're doing it all over again for the next gig. And you're a completely different person. Yes. In this person, you're like the hottie. In this mm -hmm. person, you're like the old mama. And yes. then, you know, it goes from one thing to the next. But you got to, like I said, you got to, you have to love it. The versatility yes. of, of, of it and the for variety. Yes. And the next one will be, uh, when it comes to acting, what is something we will be surprised to learn? When it comes to acting, what is something that you would be surprised to learn? Wow. Um, what we were just saying, how okay. challenging okay. it is. You know, because people who do it well make it look easy. But yes. it's not easy transforming yourself into these different people because we mm -hmm. really are being different people mm -hmm. all of the time. But we have to be believable. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I could do that. Oh, I mm -hmm. could be an actor. Put yourself in front of a camera. Yeah. Give them a script of where they have to be vulnerable or they have to be emotional mm -hmm. or they have to be psychotic or yes. they have to be mean. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's not as easy as you think. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then remembering all the dialogue. And then it's not just what you do, but how you relate to the other people that are in the mm -hmm. project with you. Yeah. It's, it's harder than you think. And to do it over and over and over again, mm. especially in live yes. performance, like on a Broadway show, eight mm -hmm. shows a week. It's more than a notion. Mm. Yeah. It's your hundredth time doing it, but yes. it's the audience's first time seeing it. Mm -hmm. So they gotta believe it just like it was the first time. And uh it takes it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of skill to do it well. Yes, yeah, so I'd be surprised when they come in there and they do the lines, they don't have no script, they just go in there quoting mm -hmm. it like it ain't nothing. So that shocked me. That. So yeah, I only seen like one or two people with a lines. That was it. But everybody else is coming there like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that I find that really interesting when I went on set. It's not what you thought it was. Yeah. What was it? Yeah. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I learned to have a new found respect in the hours and stuff you all put in and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so all the people that it takes to make happen. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, between lights and sound and mm -hmm. makeup and hair and wardrobe. And mm -hmm. this person is the writer and this person is the script supervisor. Yes. And this, it takes a lot of people mm -hmm. to make it happen. Even for something that only lasts a few seconds yes. on screen. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what are your musical icons and influences? 
I have several. Uh, right. I like lots of different kinds of music. Uh, everybody from uh, Gladys Knight mm -hmm. to Stevie Wonder to Earth, Wind and Fire uh, as composers, Lionel Richie as composers, Patrice Russian um, and singers and performers and her, I love her. I love her music and her presentation. There are lots of artists that are out now that I really, really enjoy. Um, and then I also, like I said, I love opera. Okay. Um, uh, the, the classics, uh, everything from uh, La Boheme to current musicals, like a classic American musical is Porgy right. and Beth. You know, and then I also love Broadway music. I I love all kinds of music. I can't say I get into acid rock. I can't say that. Um, okay. Some country music I enjoy. Some of it, yeah, not so much. Okay. But again, that's why there's a variety for everybody. Mm -hmm. And the next one would be what inspired you to start a New Day Foundation. Uh, what inspired me to do A New Day was the work that I do with young people. I've been doing since I was a young person myself. Mm -hmm. I used to get bullied in elementary school mm -hmm. and um, really didn't have healthy self-esteem mm -hmm. when I was young, but I had teachers that spoke positivity into me. A couple right. of those teachers, one is named Barbara Ames and the other one, Karen Fogler, who actually right. still come to every single performance, every concert I do, even to this day. And they've been my teachers. Yeah. They started in second and third third grade. Um, they spoke into my life. And they also had Lynn Manuel Miranda as a student. And he credits them also for inspiring to do the work that he's doing now, like writing Hamilton, writing In the Heights, uh, right. being the composer for Moana. Okay. Um, so I give a shout out to teachers okay. who make a difference in their students' lives. But from then, it was just always important to me to whatever I am able to do, mm -hmm. to speak back positively into the life, particularly of a young young person. Okay. And encourage, and encourage a parent, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? To, yes. to speak positivity into kids. So I've been doing master classes, motivational speaking and, and workshops and mm -hmm. all those kinds of things since I was a teenager. Uh, but the New Day Foundation is basically a play on my name, Dawn, meaning the beginning of a new day, uh, we okay. say that where you were yesterday, where you are today is okay. not where you have to be tomorrow. So okay. we want to be your support towards a new day of opportunity and towards being your best self. So we founded that and now we do programs across the country mm -hmm. for at-risk teen boys, at-risk teen girls. We do programs throughout the year and then once a year we have our uh, conference. All right. We have it on a college campus. And it's geared toward high school seniors and juniors who are on their way into college and their parents to make sure that the whole family gets the information that we want to provide. And for college freshmen and sophomores, you know, you're now you're in college and it's like, okay, I got here. Mm -hmm. Now what? Now what? So we give a day long, like seven and a half to eight hours of okay. workshops in financial literacy and in technology. And okay. we also award scholarships. We give out eight scholarships of $2,000 each and a brand new computer. And that's in New York or LA? Scholarship recipients. That's in LA. We were, okay. we were poised to do it in New York. Okay. We were scheduled to do it in New York and then COVID happened. So we All had right. to cancel it. Okay. Uh, we were also offering financial literacy seminars to the Broadway community. But again, we had to cancel it yes. because of COVID um, to teach people you know, how with your entertainment dollars, because mm -hmm. like I said, you make money sporadically. You work here, you work there of how to make your money maximize itself for you, knowing that you, you, know, you really have to be conscious of how you spend your money when you only make money sporadically. And it was tax time and it was all of that. And yeah, we, mm -hmm. had, to, we had to cancel it. So okay. that's what we do at the A New Day Found, Found Foundation. So uh, I'm Sounds grateful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So the website is www.anewdayfoundation.net. Mm -hmm. You can get more information about the foundation there as well as make donations because everything we do and we offer, we offer free of charge okay. to our participants. So all of those donations and contributions makes a big difference. It makes it possible for us to do and offer the things that we do. Okay. Yeah, I saw you help out with Sickle Cell. I just wrote my first book about Sickle Cell, a motivational book uh, oh, about me dealing with Sickle Cell. Huh? 
Are you a sickle cell client yourself? Do you have Yes, that's why I moved to Atlanta. I used to get sick every three, four months. So now I went 20, 23 months without being admitted. So I still have my oh, ER visits. But that's um awesome. Yes, I got better. Congratulations. Thank you. My yes. friend Kiki Shepherd with the KISS Foundation. Oh yeah, I saw that. Sickle cell. Yes, and <laughs> actually one of our scholarship recipients this year just graduated from Spelman okay. and is on her way to Emory to start nursing school. She was one of our scholarship recipients who was a sickle cell client as well. So okay. it's a huge achievement to get to your age, to mm. graduate college, to be able to do all of those things mm. after having dealing with episodes and mm. having to miss school and you know all those kinds of things, but to still stick with it yes. and pull through on the other side. Mm. So we gave her a scholarship and uh, contributed towards a new computer so that she could start Emory School of Nursing. So okay. I applaud you as well, man. See, I Thank didn't know you. that. I got to tell Miss Kiki. Okay, yeah, and I, I like to to you know, uh, one day about that eventually. I will make sure I let her, let her know that I spoke with you and that it's worth her time okay, to make sure you. that she connects with you. That's awesome. Congratulations. Well, oh, thank you. I just won this award with Sickle Cell 101 Foundation too for um also too. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's excellent. Yes. That's excellent. Yeah, for most likely to succeed is what I what I want the category for. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, so. The next one, I guess you kind of answer any upcoming projects you like to share with readers. So you kind of mostly answered that one at the beginning. Yep. Yep. Star, Star Trek is is out now. And the other shows that I mentioned, Apple mm -hmm. and Onion, and Where in the World is Carmen San, San Diego, and The Boys. Uh, right. Season two starts September 4th. Okay. So you'll see me and see season two of The Boys. So that's next week. That's next week on yep. Amazon. There you okay. go. Okay, and this will be the uh, fun questions now. So if you could uh, bring back a show for one season, what would it be? If I could bring back a show for one season, a show I was on? No, or any show. Any show mm -hmm. for one season. Wow. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. <laughs> if I could bring back any show for one season. Okay, there was a show mm -hmm. when I was a kid called Wonderama, mm -hmm. where... It was like not really a talk show, but an interactive show where they would pull kids out of the audience and play different games with them. The kids would come from all around the country okay. and they would sing songs, they would play games, they would it was it was so great to right. me. They would have guest performers come on and entertain the kids and such. Um was it on Nickelodeon or no? No, Nickelodeon didn't even exist. Then. Okay. <laughs> it was on one of those networks, either CBS, ABC, or NBC. I don't know okay. which one. But there was also another show called Teen Summit that BET used to used to do. There yeah. you go. It was kind of those shows where the mm -hmm. kids were there and they were involved and you heard their voices and mm -hmm. you know they were participants in the show as well as you know being entertained and playing mm -hmm. games. I thought that show was was just great. Wonderama. Right. Yeah, they don't do shows like that no more. Nope, they sure don't. Yeah. They sure don't. And the next one will be, uh, what's your most embarrassing childhood memory? Oh, my gosh. Okay, that's easy. <laughs> that's easy. I, was, I sang in my first recital. I was four years old, okay. and I sang the song, Getting to Know You. My mom used to be a substitute teacher at an elementary school not far from where we live. Okay. So, you know, when I got out of kindergarten, mm -hmm. you know, I would come to the school, mm -hmm. sit and wait for my mom to finish, so then we, we would walk home. Right. So everybody knew that I loved to sing. Mm -hmm. So they let me sing in the school spring concert, right? right? Even though I wasn't a student, even though I was so young. Mm -hmm. So they worked with me, I sang the song, Getting mm -hmm. to Know You, from okay. the show The King and I, right? Okay. And uh, I rehearsed and I had all the number, had all the movements mm -hmm. and gestures. I had on this pretty dress. I was a flower girl at one of my aunt's weddings. So I was, oh, you could, oh man, you couldn't tell me anything. I got on stage and I looked out and saw all the people in the audience and like, <laughs> and, oh, right. <laughs> oh man, oh man. So they had pictures of me standing there like, <laughs> and the teacher was down below me showing mm -hmm. me the gestures and you reminding me of the words. So mm -hmm. I got through it, okay. but it was not a good experience. And mm -hmm. I sat on the side and I mm -hmm. started crying mm -hmm. and said, please let me do it again. They were like, yo, baby, just sit down. Just mm -hmm. sit. It's all right. It's all right. So I vowed right then and there that you only get one time to make mm -hmm. a first impression that no matter what, I would never let myself be that 
that choking again. I would never allow myself to choke that badly ever again. So yeah, that's probably but you my got problem. over it. Look where you at. I now. got over it. <laughs> yeah, because you could have gave up. I could have gave up. No. Bet for another yeah, no, sit down. Just go and sit down. Yeah, you never would have had your gift that God gave you. See, come on, come yep. on. So uh yeah. So that was that was the most embarrassing, so much so that it has stuck with me mm -hmm. my entire life. Yeah, but I talked about that in my book because the preacher came here last year during the Super Bowl from Dallas, and you talked about a lot of people uh, making money and they're kicking the dog and cat, but they're not happy. Like your two best days on earth, yeah. the day you were born, and when you find out what your gift is, you like yeah, yeah cemetery is the richest place on earth because you got like a lot of books, authors, songs, businesses never open because they never got their gift while they was living on earth. So like, yeah, it's good to have money, but you're not walking yeah. in your gift. That's like that's not you're not living. You're not living. Yeah, so you could have easily gave in or threw the towel in at that time, but you didn't. <laughs> yep. So that's good. We get, you didn't give up. Nope. Yep. And the next one, what are some misconceptions our society has about black women? Wow. Uh, I mean, it's nothing new that mm. when you are educated, that mm. when you are determined, that makes you hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're not overly submissive, when you, when you speak your mind, that makes you angry. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes you the B word if you have an mm -hmm. opinion or, you know, the same attributes that they give to men mm -hmm. for being good at business and being good leaders, et cetera. Mm -hmm. When you are a woman of color and successful, they see you as a threat. They don't necessarily see you as a colleague. And let me not be too general because not everybody yeah. feels that way. There are people who say, you know, they appreciate your excellence, mm -hmm. they appreciate your voice, and they appreciate your skill set and your ability to be able to direct others, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, to give direction, to delegate, to be entrusted with mm -hmm. getting things done. Because yeah. truth be told, more often than not, when you put a woman of color in a position of authority, Mm -hmm. And she's demonstrated that she has the expertise, she has the skill set to be a leader as well as a contributor. Mm -hmm. People can't deny the excellence yeah. of our work. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know what, if you want to get it done, give mm -hmm. it to Dawn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so there's some on both sides. There are people who you want to work with and there are people you don't want to work with. Yeah. And that's yeah. got nothing to do with color or gender. It's like, yeah. mm, you know mm -hmm. what, a not cool person is a not cool person. I don't care yeah. what color you are. Yeah. I don't care what sex you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when you come as this package of mm -hmm. being comfortable in your own skin, yeah. uh, whatever shade of brown you happen to be, when you are comfortable in your own skin, mm -hmm. when you dare to speak your own mind, people see that as a threat and they see you as not feminine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They don't, yeah. they don't think of you as, as, as a woman, but that's been generational for us since we were brought to this country. Yes. You know what I mean? You get you get used for your skill set, but mm. you don't get seen as a woman. You get seen as the sexual tool, mm -hmm. as a sex sexual object. But yeah. that's not new. Mm -hmm. That's not new, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but it is changing. It mm. continues to get better. Mm -hmm. uh, and the more of us that stay in the game and and are able, you know, to maintain our course and get through the process mm -hmm. of not without our scars, but yes. we're through. And mm -hmm. it makes it possible for the next person behind us to come through a little easier, maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The fact yes. that we now have a more woman of color as an option for our vice president, our yes. potential next vice president of the country, just says she knows, Kamala knows, she's standing on the shoulders of women like Sojourner Truth. Mm -hmm. of women like Harriet Tubman, of women like Shirley Chisholm, of women like Maxine Waters, you know yeah. what I mean? And mm -hmm. Congresswoman Diane Watson. Yeah. She didn't just jump to that mm -hmm. position out of nowhere. Yeah. There were those who, you know, fought the good fight, got into good trouble mm -hmm. to make it possible for her to take the next step. And she re represents to all those young girls out there, brown, whether you're Latina brown, African-American brown, Native American, you know, brown of color to mm -hmm. say there's a place for me and there's a possibility for me. And uh, that was one of the blessings of being on a different world yeah. was me being there as a brown skinned sister, mm -hmm. you know, and then Charnel Brown came after me who was even darker brown. You know yeah. what I mean? For women of color to see themselves and say, you know what? Mm -hmm. I can be that. I can do that. And uh, 
that's a blessing to be a part of that legacy. It really yeah. is. Yeah, you'll never see another show like A Different World or Cosby either. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but you know what? It's possible. It's not yeah. impossible. Yes. I mean, the fact that our show is still on, it's what, 33 years? Yes. And that show is still on TV. It hasn't not been on television in yes. 33 years, not just here in this country, but around the world. Yes. And, um, you know, there are kids watching the show now that weren't even born in mm -hmm. the same decade is where yes. we got that show. And yeah, they're still watching it and being moved and inspired by it. And that's fantastic. That's, yeah. that's phenomenal. It really is. Yeah, I'll be 40 in October, so I know it was on probably when I was at least five or six, I believe. There you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. And you yeah. didn't know what you were watching, but your, but your parents might yeah. have been watching it. And yeah, then I watched both you, of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that when you got older, you mm -hmm. were able to make your own choice as to whether or not you wanted to see it. And yes. uh, that's what people are doing all around the world. And we're grateful. I'm grateful for it. Yes. And the next one is, um, what is the song that will always remind you of a specific person, moment, or feeling? Oh, my gosh. There's a lot of those. Okay. I'm not going to tell on boyfriends, but, you know, there's songs <laughs> that remind you of a certain boyfriend when you were with them. Okay. Or, uh, you know, when I got to write the, the theme song for right. A Different World. That just changed my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I remember that exact time. Mm -hmm. That was in October of mm -hmm. 1986. Okay. Uh, I just finished doing the Tap Dance Kid, the national tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got approached about writing the theme song the same time I got approached about auditioning mm -hmm. for the show. Right. And like I said, they didn't know that they had contacted the same person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spoke of my own experience in the words of the, the theme song. Because like I said, I was so young when I started college. You know, mm -hmm. I know my parents loved me. I said parents, but I was raised by my, by my single mom. Okay. You know what I mean? And my brothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was scared. And you mm -hmm. don't know what you know until you're forced to deal with it. Yeah. You know, dealing with paying your own tuition and school fees and getting to and from class and doing homework. It's, it's a big shift for being yeah. responsible for mm -hmm. yourself. So that was a turning point. Um, different music. Wow, the music of my life. I, I, that's hard to say. There's so okay. much music. There's so much music. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. One song for me would be one when we graduated high school, too, and a couple songs when I moved to Atlanta also, too. So okay. yeah, like I say, it's too many to name. It's a, it's a lot to yeah. name. Yeah. OK, so two questions left. So uh, if you could go back to one historical event to witness it, what would it be and why? Wow. One or two historical events to witness it, what would it be and why? I was there mm -hmm. at Wembley Stadium in London when Nelson Mandela got released. Oh, wow. I would do that again. Mm -hmm. I would be there again. Uh, I wasn't part of the concert but I was there and I did get to meet him. Several friends of mine were part of the con concert and hearing that he had gotten released, the, the joy and the hope that that sent through my entire spirit, that that sent through the country yeah. of where we could possibly be as human beings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Respecting each other, um, cooperating with each other, mm -hmm. apartheid being ended, yeah. That was that was that was huge for yeah. me in in my spirit. Um <clears throat> and probably the the first moon launch. Okay. Probably the first moon launch. I was really really young when that okay. happens. So I really didn't know what was going on, but the thought of what man was able to do by the grace of God, mm -hmm. what he endowed us with this sense of science and this sense of accomplishment and where yeah. we could go and be in the future as, as, a, as a race, mm -hmm. as, as, as humanity. Uh, that was just really exciting to me. I mean, there are lots of points in history mm -hmm. that I would have loved to have experienced. I would have loved to experience the March on Washington, you know, yes. Congressman, um, John Lewis crossing mm -hmm. the Pettus Bridge. I, d I don't know that kind of courage. Mm -hmm. I don't know too many people today with that kind of courage. Yes. That generation that, that physically put their lives on the line. Yes. 
knowing they were going to be beaten, knowing they were mm. going to be incarcerated. And once they got out, they were mm. right back at it again. Yes. Um, to be able to have proudly and courageously been able to experience that, I would hope that I would have been that, that brave. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it's an exceptional kind of bravery and courage and sacrifice that uh, I, I wish while I was alive at that time, I really wasn't old enough to know Remember. what was going on. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. but to know what was going on, it was 1965. Yeah. It was yeah. like, Ooh. I was, you know, yeah. So, um, yeah. So those those kinds of things would have been a huge honor. Okay, yeah. I went to the um the mirror to take some pictures of John Lewis. I had I, I never got a chance to meet him in Atlanta because I meet plenty of celebrities here, but mm -hmm. hey, I never got a chance to meet him. But I would love to do something like maybe uh, Dr. King or maybe Jackie Robinson first game with him breaking the color barrier or yes. something like that. That yes. would have been nice to do. I'm a big Michael Jackson fan too, but. Jackie Robinson, Dr. King would be more historic than that. There you go. There yeah. you go. I yeah. did get to meet Dr. Dr. C. T. Viv Vivian, who okay. was also a civil rights uh, activist and freedom writer. We okay. had become friends, and I had gotten to meet Congressman Lewis a All few right. times. He was a beautiful, beautiful person, mm -hmm. and Dr. Dr. Joseph Lowry. Okay. So all of them were from that civil rights mm -hmm. period. I sang at Dr. Dr. Lowry's. I think it was his 90th birthday All concert. Right. He asked me to come and sing for his birthday party. Okay. Um, and people like Andrew Young, you're surrounded by them. You yeah. are in the cradle of the civil rights movement there in yeah. Atlanta. You know, yeah, they got Andrew plenty of streets Young. and stuff named after them and stuff. There yeah. you go. There mm -hmm. you go. And while I didn't meet Doc, Dr. King, I okay. did get to meet his wife, Coretta. Okay. You know, before she passed, I served on a couple of councils with her and okay. the kids, Bernice and okay. Martin Jr. and Dexter and Yolanda before she passed away. Okay. Yolanda was doing a one woman show about the mm. civil rights movement. And uh, I had toured with her for a while. Okay. Uh, she did the monologues and I sang excerpts in between mm -hmm. each of her my monologues. So that family has been an honor okay. to had uh, a relationship with them over the years. And Ralph Abernathy's daughter, okay. Don Zay, mm -hmm. Donzele Abernathy um, have become friends over the years, and uh, yeah, it's okay. a, it's, a, it's a blessing. So I didn't get to meet them per se, the icons, but their okay. families that were so generously shared them with us. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine, yeah. we had their we had their parents in our lives, and because of that, because of them sharing them with us, the okay. world is different and a better better yeah. place. Yeah, I met Dr. Uh, his son the third one time at a movie premiere. But I know Edgewood, that area, they say it was like the richest street, I think, one time for mm -hmm. blacks. And so it's kind of shocked me. And so but I know the Harlem Renaissance and Harlem was where blacks went at to become successful from the South. And that was like the big area I learned in uh, one of my humanities class and stuff there. So I was kind of mm -hmm. shocked that street here in Atlanta was the richest black street at one point. But I know Edgewood got plenty of blacks, restaurant business and stuff like that, too. Right. I knew a lot of Harlem Renaissance was big for us to go there and become successful. And 125th is like really my favorite street to go to because of the shops and all the stuff and the yes. businesses, the, the, the mix CDs, the t shirts. There you go. All, <laughs> there. all up and down. Yeah. Yep. And Adam yep. Clayton so, Powell, so. that big, huge, beautiful building mm -hmm. and the Apollo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right there. Nothing but history all up yep. and down that street. Yeah. Yep. So, like 10 good blocks, you just keep walking and walking, everybody friendly and stuff there. It's true. It's true. Yeah. When I was in New York, when we, we were doing Tina while it was open, mm. my apartment was in Harlem. Okay. Right on 116th. Yeah, and they got good, cheap clothes, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not cheap, inexpensive. Yes. Uh, there you yeah. go. There you Compared go. to other places. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and the last question would be, if you could hold on to one memory from your life forever, what would it be? If I could hold on to one memory from my life forever, what would it be? Mm. I do hold on to this memory forever in my life. It was my grandmother, Miss Olga Brown. Uh, I was seven years old and my brothers, I have three bright brothers right. and they, it was during the summer. We had finished school and my brothers went away to sleepaway camp right. for the summer. And I didn't get to go because it was an all boys camp. And right. I was mortified. I was miserable. I said, I'm going to be left here by myself all summer. All right. I didn't know that my mom and my grandmother had cooked up a plan that, mm -hmm. okay, they sent my brothers off and I was there. I was all miserable. I was pouting. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. My grandmother says, okay, you're going to come with me. She took me on my very first plane ride down to Miami. Oh, wow. And I spent the summer with my grandmother up and down Florida. It was, it was a month. And she took me to Cocoa Beach and there was a big show that was really popular and called I Dream of Jeannie. And it happened at the NASA, the Cape Canaveral base in Cocoa Beach. And I thought, oh my God, we're going to go see I Dream of Jeannie. Mm -hmm. And uh, she actually took me to NASA. And that was when I saw my first rocket ship and how science works and all of that. So that was why that would be one of the things I would want to go back to. But that memory of that time with my grandmother of her seeing like seeing Mm -hmm. me and depositing in me a sense of the world is yours yeah it's not just bed the Mm -hmm. world is yours you can you can travel you can experience new places you can experience new things dawn and opened up the world to me i will i will forever appreciate Mm -hmm. my grandmother for that for teaching me that the world is mine and yes. opportunity is mine. And quite frankly, she was the one person in my life when I was growing up mm-hmm. that believed I could do what I'm doing now. Okay. You know, succeed in film and television and on Broadway. And mm-hmm. she actually passed away one month before she would have seen me in my first Broadway show. Oh, sorry to hear my condolences. Yeah, 1986. Oh, wow. 1986. Yeah. Uh, she passed away January, Feb, Feb, February. One okay. month before the Broadway tour I was doing, the tap dance kid was going to come to Miami. Okay. So that broke my heart. But mm. again, what she deposited in me of the sky's the limit mm. for me, as long as I'm willing to do the work and be a decent human being while I'm doing it, there's nothing that I can't achieve. And she deposited that into me. And it started that summer when I was seven, where she took okay. me plane ride and let me know that I see you and the world is is yours okay yeah. but she did know you was doing it she just didn't get a chance to see you right there you go okay you go. yeah the support goes a long way and Kennedy Space Center is like an hour away from me I've been a, a few is times it? yeah yeah it's so pretty we, cool isn't it yeah yeah we used to hear the shuttle come back all the time from Florida it's like a big boom when it comes back and stuff from Florida so yeah we used uh-huh. to hear see it all the time and actually that's where Carnival, a lot of cruise ships take off there in Miami. That was like the two okay. biggest ports in Florida for the cruise okay. ships to take off. Mm-hmm. And Cape Canaveral, close. so Coco, all that stuff is close by like go. an hour from where I'm Thank from you. back home. Okay, excellent. Yes, yeah, so I see Miami where she took you. You ended up at UM eventually. Well, Cora Davis. Hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so Cora Davis is right by Miami, so really the same area. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. So um, thank you for your time. And the last question: How can fans keep in contact with you on social media? On social media, uh, I'm at the Dawn Lewis official fan page, fan right. page on face Facebook. Right. So Dawn Lewis official fan page on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram, I am at Dawn D A W N N two N's in my name, Dawn underscore Lewis L E W I S. So it's the same handle on Twitter and on Instagram. And then for the foundation, it's www.anewdayfoundation.net. Uh, and I also have my own uh, Facebook page, DawnLewis.com. And a website? The website is DawnLewis.com. Okay. And make sure you give them the IMDB also. IMDB. I mean, it's all my name. Okay. If you add the second N, Dawn, D-A-W-N-N-L-E-W-I-I-S, I'm real easy to find. And uh, again, I mentioned Kamala Harris, but I really want to encourage people to vote. Uh, if you are cool with the way things have been going the last few years, then I have an idea of who you're going to vote for. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but if you're ready for things to be different, if you're ready for things to be better, we already know where we've been. The yeah. question is, where do we want to go? And these yeah. next four years are going to be crucial. So yeah. please vote, please vote, please vote. We've got two options, either where we've been or where we're going to go. There's no yeah. third option. Yeah. So don't sit and waste your energy saying, well, I don't know if I like her and I heard this about him. It's like, okay, but you got to see what he did as vice president. You know what he was a part of. You know what he stands for. Mm -hmm. So nobody's perfect. So if you're looking for perfection, you're never going to find it. Yeah. Especially in politics. You're never going to find it. So it's do we either want more of the same or do we want to position ourselves for change, for Mm -hmm. opportunity? But either way, you've got to vote. Please, please, please don't take that responsibility 
lightly. People gave their lives yeah. so that people of color could vote. Yeah. They gave their lives. They've been giving their lives for generations. People are yeah. still out there protesting all summer long, and not just here in this country, but around the world. People are ready for a change. They're ready for better opportunities, ready for better treatment. They're ready for better enforcement of the laws that we already have. Mm -hmm. There's laws that we already have that are just not being enforced. So yeah. yes, we need new training. Yes, we need new legislature, but we need to be able to hold people accountable. And yeah. the only way we can do that as individuals is with our vote and every single vote counts. Yep, so good please, point. Please, please vote, please vote. Yeah, one of my classmates, uh, Charles, made a post from high school like, yeah, even if you don't like Biden, if you get him out in four years, you don't like him. So uh, that's a good point, too. But I think he'll do a good job, I'm hoping. So he got a president. So. Yeah, so he's better than what we got. So me, you can run the country <laughs> better than what he run in the country at this go. point. <laughs> yeah, we don't got go. no politics experience. So there you go. Yeah, so it's been a, a rough four years. But like I say, thank you for your time. And Thank coming you. on here, I definitely enjoyed it. I'll be following you, and uh, I'll definitely DM you if, uh, when everything comes back. Like I said, New York is my favorite city, so I try to come once a year oh, uh, excellent. to New York. So I'll definitely be trying to get some tickets uh, to that <laughs> or any other play that you, you do eventually in that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll, we will be back in Tina come yeah. next, next spring. Okay, well, I'll definitely be checking the dates to see uh, for that, to see also with that. Okay. Like I say, I like doing the Broadway plays and also too. So I think I, I we'll definitely enjoy it. Excellent. Thank you again. Okay. It was my right, pleasure. Welcome. Thank you for your uh, time and enjoy the rest of your week. You as well. God bless. Bye-bye. Right, Take care.